Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. As you can probably tell from my voice, I've been a little bit under the weather the last couple of days, but severe weather waits for no one, and that is what we are here to talk about today. We have a multi-day stretch of severe weather on tap starting this weekend into early next week from the central and southern plains into parts of the mid-south and southeast. For Sunday, March 24th, the SPC has outlined a level 2 out of 5 slight risk in the yellow shaded area here, basically from the Kansas-Nebraska border southward through parts of western and central Kansas and into western and central Oklahoma, including places like Wichita, Oklahoma City, Norman, down toward Lawton, under the gun for severe weather on Sunday, before the threat turns into more of a uh, mid-south and southeast threat on Monday, March 25th. The SBC has outlined a risk area from east Texas into Louisiana and central central Mississippi, southern Arkansas as well in that threat for Monday. All hazards are going to be on the table for both of these days. We could see a few tornadoes, some large hail on Sunday before things transition into more of a damaging wind threat as the threat pushes east. And then on Monday, uh, we are expecting that all hazards threat to continue across the yellow shaded region here, including places like Shreveport, Alexandria, Louisiana, over toward Jackson, Mississippi, under the gun on Monday. So Pretty interesting setup. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion on this setup over the past several days on social media. Lots of intricacies to this setup, so we are going to take a deep dive into the model data today and look at some of the potential outcomes for this multi-day stretch of severe weather. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First, let's take a look at what's going on right now. This is our SPC mesoanalysis, and we'll start off at 500 millibars as we always do. Right away, you see a belt of strong flow here across the northern portion of the country into Canada, associated with a trough up there. A little bit of stronger flow coming right into the left side of the picture there. That is going to be associated with the leading edge of our main trough that is moving its way into the southern uh, and central portions of the country for our severe weather threat on Sunday, Monday. And then you see this little trough down here across the southern portion of the country. Strong belt of flow impinging upon the Gulf of Mexico. And there's been a lot of chatter on social media over the last several days about the moisture return or lack thereof being a big fly in the ointment with this particular setup, especially on Sunday across the central and southern plains. And this trough is the reason why. Again, it's going to be meandering a little bit off to the east or southeast over the next few days. And by Sunday, it's going to be situated somewhere here uh, in the Florida, Georgia, South Carolina vicinity or just off the east coast there. And that is going to initiate some semblance of surface load development across the Gulf of Mexico. Here's our current surface uh, chart. We see a little bit of a broad low here across the Gulf, but this is expected to tighten up a little bit somewhere here from the Gulf Coast states down into the Gulf. And as we get a surface load to develop here, we know we get counterclockwise flow around the surface low. So that is going to be very problematic. You can see on the back side of the surface low, we have northerly winds or offshore flow pushing, keeping all that rich moisture out into the Gulf. Couple that with a cold frontal intrusion or just a, a general uh, drying and cooling trend we'll see across the southern plains here really today into tomorrow, Saturday. And so we're going to see those that rich moisture being shunted out here into the Gulf. And because we're going to have northerly flow on the backside of this sur developing surface low in the Gulf, that is going to keep that rich moisture out in the Gulf for much longer. If we didn't have this little low and, and uh, mid-level trough here across the southeast into the Gulf of Mexico, we'd be dealing with a lot better moisture return and therefore a lot more robust severe threat, especially for Sunday. Monday, not going to be so much of an issue as our threat area. We're going to have a little bit of an extra a little bit of extra time to get that moisture into the southern states, and plus we'll be very much closer to the moisture source with our target area on Monday. But for Sunday's event up here in Kansas and Oklahoma, we're going to have a tough time getting really robust moisture up into this region. Now we're going to have some compensating factors we'll talk about here in a second, but overall when you have this low in the Gulf here and a mid-level trough aloft centered over here the southeast, uh, into the um, you know kind of east coast, southeast coast vicinity, that's usually not a good thing as you'll have northerly flow on the backside of that surface low, helping to keep that moisture uh, confined to the Gulf. Speaking of our surface data here, let me refresh this real quick. So you can see we have northerly flow entrenched across much of the plains today. Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, parts of Texas entrenched in that northerly or northwesterly flow, pushing that moisture off into the Gulf. And that's going to continue through the day today. You'll see as we go through the model data here in just a second that we're going to continue to push this moisture off. Our 60s dew points already confined to parts of south Texas 
uh, but those are going to get shunted off into the Gulf with this little frontal intrusion here, or whatever this little drying or cooling trend is. Not really much of a, a baroclinic zone here or frontal zone to speak of, but generally just we're going to get this northerly flow to push this moisture, this really robust moisture out into the Gulf. We'll probably still have 50s dew points here across Texas, so we will have some moisture remaining uh, in the mainland U.S., but the rich, robust moisture going to be pushed well out into the Gulf, so we will not have enough time for Sunday. And really, that's going to stay that way until probably late Saturday at the very earliest, which is when wind will, winds will start to flip around as we get surface low development here in the central high plains. We'll talk about that here in just a second. That's when winds will start to flip around, but again, that's just, you know, less than a day of time to get that robust moisture northward. So we're not going to have really robust moisture here across uh, Kansas and Oklahoma for this event. Uh, but for Monday, we'll be much closer to that moisture source and have some extra time to get that moisture in to that region. So we'll have better moisture for Monday's threat. But Sunday, moisture definitely is an issue, although we will have some compensating factors, as I mentioned uh, here, and which we'll talk about in just a second. All right, let's dive into some model data. As we always do in these videos a few days out from the event, we're going to look at three different models, the 12Z NAM, the 12Z GFS, and in this case, the 0Z Euro. Usually we use College of DuPage to look at the European model, but uh, they're having some issues with the European model data on their end, so we're going to use Pivotal Weather, and so we're going to have to use the 0Z uh, European model data. So that's yesterday evening's run. Still should be good enough for us to compare uh, among the models, but uh, in this case we're going to use the Pivotal Weather European model and College of DuPage for the other two. We'll start off with the 12Z NAM at 500 millibars, and here is that pesky trough we talked about that's going to be a, a hindrance to our moisture return. We'll get into the moisture return and the surface uh, impacts here in just a second. But here's our trough. You see that little bit of stronger flow back across the west coast region. That is going to be the leading edge of our trough that is going to come in over the next couple days, and that's going to be our main player for our Sunday-Monday severe threat. And you can see as we go into Sunday, this is a pretty classic look for severe weather in the plains. Overall, a very broad, highly amplified trough, a uh, very large trough centered from really the, off the west coast to into the central U.S., but we have this little lead shortwave, little negatively tilted lead shortwave that is going to probably be our main forcing mechanism within this broader trough for our severe threat on Sunday. Nice, and this is a very textbook look, to negatively tilted shortwave, uh, strong defluence aloft. If we, were, if we were to go up to 250 millibars here, you'd see pretty, pretty decent defluence aloft here, winds across uh, western Kansas out of the southwest, bit more westerly flow down here across the Red River region, so nice defluence aloft, providing that uh, nice rising motion and forcing for ascent that we need to get storms to go in this environment. So our synoptic forcing, our synoptic setup here, at least at 500 millibars, looks pretty darn good. This is going to be at 21Z, uh, so 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time on Sunday. Let's go ahead and look at our GFS model. Very much the same thing. You see that trough coming in, nice negatively tilted shortwave on the leading edge, and a very similar look to what the NAM is showing there. Nice negatively tilted shortwave impinging upon Kansas into Oklahoma by uh, mid to late afternoon on Sunday. Very similar look there among the NAM and the GFS. European model, let's see how the European model handles this uh, trough. So here we go into Sunday. This is going to be Monday or at 0Z, so Sunday at 7 p.m., and that is a pretty darn good look as well. European model might be just a little bit slower than the other two models. If we go to 0Z on our NAM and GFS, we see that the, the leading edge of the stronger flow here on the GFS and the NAM, definitely moving into eastern Oklahoma, eastern Kansas at this point. And we see on the European model that our, our main, our strongest flow associated with that jet max is well back here into western Oklahoma. So we may be seeing a little bit of a slower solution with the European model, which is a little bit unusual. Obviously, as we've talked about before, the all these models have different biases. The GFS tends to be pretty progressive. The NAM tends to be much more on the slower side of things, a lot, west, a lot more of a westward shift from the other models uh, pretty frequently as, we, as we've seen in these videos in the past. But the European model seems to be on the slower side here with this particular wave. Still a very, very, really solid look to this uh, trough here. Nice short wave uh, as we see moving into western Oklahoma, southwest Kansas. So the overall idea that we'll have a lead short wave, nice negatively tilted lead short wave, is pretty much locked in among these three models. So we're seeing very good model agreement, at least for Sunday, uh, for the progression of the upper pattern. 
Now let's talk about this little pesky wave out here across the southern U.S. into the southeast. So this wave here, as we talked about, that's going to initiate cyclogenesis here across the northern Gulf into the, the south, southeast U.S. We see that trough doesn't really move a whole lot, tries to amplify a little bit going into Saturday. You see the axis of the trough still well within the Gulf on Saturday, strong belt of flow, strong little jet streak there around the base of that trough. So we're, we're probably going to see continued cyclogenesis here across this area going into probably well into the afternoon on Saturday before the trough definitely moves off into the Atlantic by Sunday morning. Let's see the overall progression of the surface pattern here. So I'm going to go back to our current look on both of these models and we will see how this surface pattern looks going into the next few days. So you see here, you would expect to see with that trough and some cyclogenesis and that's exactly what we get. This is about midnight tonight or so, about 1 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. It's a nice little surface flow developing here across southern Alabama with northerly flow entrenched on the backside of that surface flow. That is what we talked about just a little bit ago. When you have a low situated out here across the Gulf Coast states, that is going to bring northerly flow on the backside and push all that, keep that moisture shunted into the Gulf. So you see, we have northerly flow pretty much entrenched into the region, and this is 21Z Saturday. Uh, so that's going to be 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time on Saturday. We are starting to see a little bit of cyclogenesis here across the central high plains, given that we have that trough starting to come in. So we will have kind of competing effects here. And eventually the winds will flip around to more southeasterly. And we do see that start to happen here by Saturday afternoon. Winds across Texas out of the east southeast, still plenty of northerly flow across much of the Gulf. So really won't be seeing robust moisture return until probably at least this point, this is 9Z on Sunday, so 4 a.m. Central Daylight Time on Sunday, we finally start to see a broader plume of southeasterly flow out here off the uh, southeast Texas coast into the Gulf, and that is going to start to bring that moisture northward. So you can see that moisture return very much delayed in this scenario, and that's one of the reasons why we're not going to see robust moisture make its way up toward this surface low, which, as you can see by now, is starting to really tighten up there across eastern Colorado in the, in the central high plains as a result of that trough coming in. Uh, classic uh, lee cyclogenesis processes there when you have that trough that southwesterly flow starting to traverse the rockies we'll see pretty strong cyclogenesis out here across eastern colorado western kansas and that is going to at least try its best to bring that moisture northward into the region you hear you see here as we go into sunday that low really tightens up strong cyclogenesis out here this is 4 p.m central daylight time on sunday let me zoom into our uh, central plain sector very very tight surface flow here this is a, a classic evolution with a severe weather threat in the plains that should at least try its best to compensate for that delayed uh, start of moisture return into the plains and at least try to get some at least probably low 50s low to mid 50s dew points up in here across western kansas into oklahoma uh, by sunday afternoon so we should have some moisture not going to be the those 60s dew points that we'd want to see for a really robust threat but we should have enough moisture and the one thing with this upper trough is that we are going to see very cold temperatures aloft with this particular trough i'll, I'll zoom out to our uh, uh, u.s sector here so you see all these dark grays, that is colder air aloft, minus 20, minus 22, 24, and, and lower temperatures there associated with this trough. Very, very cold air you see here accompanying this trough as it moves into the plains. All these grays seeping into the central and southern high plains there, that is very, very cold air aloft. And that is going to help compensate for the overall lack of moisture return, ro robust moisture return. So that is going to help steepen the lapse rates aloft and allow us to build instability, even though our dew points are going to be hanging out probably in the low 50s, low to mid 50s at best with this setup. So even though we have limited moisture and that's still going to be a, a modulating factor with the tornado threat, it looks like, we'll have very cold air aloft to provide enough instability to support severe convection in this environment. Let's take a look uh, quickly at the GFS surface low progression. So you see that surface low sets up. So here with the GFS solution, you see that surface low develop here across the Gulf Coast states going into this evening. That's going to move off to the east and we see really not broad uh, so we see maybe a little bit earlier transition here with the gfs to more east southeasterly flow uh bringing that moisture inland here a little bit earlier than maybe what the nam was showing not all that much of a difference here between the two models but the overall idea is that we're going to have delayed moisture return at least the onset of moisture return is going to be delayed 
as we have the surface load developing across the central high plains. Here we go into the day on uh, Sunday. That's a pretty classic, classic severe weather look with this surface low out here across the Kansas, uh, Colorado border. Uh, warm temperatures feeding up into that low probably will have some sort of dry line we'll look at the moisture here in just a second feeding up into that low and we'll have a nice plume of moisture out ahead of the surface low up here into kansas and along the dry line down into western oklahoma so really the models are locked in at least the nam and the gfs are pretty locked in on this solution uh, here's the nam here's the gfs very very similar solutions with among these models so we're seeing pretty good model agreement and that that will have a very strong surface low here uh, centered across eastern colorado western kansas uh, for uh, by sunday afternoon here is the european model let's take a look at the um We'll take a look at the moisture here initially as well because the uh, Pivotal has the uh, isobars and the moisture on one product here. So here is our uh, uh, the European model. You see by Sunday we start to see that moisture try to make its way northward. So here we are, 0Z, very similar solution, maybe a little bit suppressed to the south based on the other models, a little bit farther north location of the surface low, but overall we are pretty locked in on the surface low being somewhere in that eastern Kansas, or western Kansas, eastern Colorado vicinity by Sunday afternoon. Let's take a look at the moisture now. I'm going to go to our southern plains sector first so we can see how the moisture evolves. So here's our initialization with the NAM this morning. 50s dew points up into Kansas and Oklahoma. Those 60s dew points really relegated to the southeast Texas coast and into the Gulf. That really rich moisture relegated well off to the south. And you see as we go through the day today, that is going to get shunted off uh, by some sort of perhaps frontal zone, just that overall northerly flow pushing that moisture off well into the Gulf. And you see those, those blue colors, not even close to the Texas coast really uh, by tomorrow afternoon. So those 60s dew points well out into the Gulf, just broad 40s and 50s across Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma into Texas. And again, we're not going to see much change in that until probably Sunday morning at best. We start to see those 60s dew points creep in to southern Texas. Low 50s dew points making their way up into Kansas and Oklahoma by 12Z Sunday, 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time on Sunday. Then we'll see with that such a strong surface low, that's going to really back and strengthen those surface winds out of the south or southeast to really start try to pump that moisture northward again. We're not going to have much moisture to pump in time uh, for this event on Sunday, but we're going to at least try to get mid -50, low to mid 50s dew points ahead of the surface low there into uh, western Kansas, western Oklahoma. So this is a 21Z, and you see the moisture is pretty much, very much on the meager side here for the NAM, and that is unusual. Uh, definitely when the NAM is showing more meager moisture, uh, that is some, probably something that is that will, would raise your eyebrows, is the NAM tends to undermix, keeps the dew points a little bit higher than they should be. Uh, it, that's just a typical bias with the NAM model, and the fact that it has a little bit lower dew points here, mid to upper 40s to low 50s at best, that is something to keep in mind, something to watch for sure. But this should be adequate enough with that cold air aloft, even though we'll have upper 40s to low 50s dew points on this particular solution, the cold air aloft should be able to compensate somewhat, even though we may start to see temperature dew point spreads getting up into that 20 plus degree range, which may be unfavorable for significant tornadic activity. Uh, but we still should see enough instability with the cold air aloft to support eight supercells, which in sh what should be a strongly sheared environment with a uh, strong southwest flow aloft with that short wave as well as a strong strong southerly or southeasterly flow there at the surface uh, and we should see a strong low level jet as well across the plane so very strong deep layer shear uh, in place probably strong low level shear as well uh, but this moisture is going to be a limiting factor in the overall tornado threat with this setup but we should be having again enough instability for storms to fire in this environment so that is 4 p.m. on Sunday we start to see maybe a little bit better moisture starting to creep up there into the um, Oklahoma, Kansas vicinity by, this is 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time on Sunday. So moisture definitely on the margins for severe activity, but again, we should have enough instability for severe storms with this setup. All right, let's go back down to the Southern Plains sector. This is the GFS depiction of the moisture. Once again, that's those 60s dew points swept well out into the Gulf, uh, even more so than the NAM. We start to, start to see the um, initiation of moisture return Sunday morning, and this is by 21Z, so 4 p.m. Sunday very much similar to the NAM. So the GFS is showing much limited, very much limited moisture up here into Kansas, 40s, upper 40s to 50s dew points here ahead of this dry line feature uh, with a little bit more robust moisture down into western Oklahoma down to the south. Uh, this is at 0Z. Very limited moisture here as well, but enough instability to get storms to fire. Uh, European model, I'll zoom in here on the uh, southern plains sector as well. And we see very much a similar solution. This is by 0Z 
on uh, Monday, so 7 p.m. Sunday. We do see start to see very similar moisture as well, Low 50, upper 40s to low 50s dew points. That has definitely backed off maybe a little bit from previous runs. We saw a little bit higher moisture uh, in previous runs of all these models, so we are backing off a little bit on the moisture return. Uh, so upper 40s to low 50s dew points might be the best we can get up there for Sunday. Uh, but again, that should be enough to support a severe threat with such cold air aloft. Now, one thing that has been interesting with these models, I'm going to go back here to uh, back up here on all these models, particularly the NAM and the GFS. Watch here in south central Texas. We see a little bit of a dry plume develop. This area of, of dew points that crater out here across south central Texas moving off to the north and starting to impinge on our dry line in western Oklahoma, especially by Sunday afternoon. You see these, these low to mid 40s dew points here across western Oklahoma. Still better moisture up here on the surface low in Kansas. So my, that, the area in Kansas might not be affected by this, but down along the dry line, southwest Kansas into western Oklahoma, we see this little bit of a dry plume make its way up into the region. GFS shows the same thing. Watch this little dry plume develop right out there across central Texas, moving off to the north east of the dry line. Very, very interesting. I haven't really seen this before, and I'm not really 100% sure what this is. There have been some hypotheses I've seen on social media saying that this could be downsloping winds off the higher terrain of northern and central Mexico. So you have higher terrain out here in northern Mexico, and as we see on our, our observed sounding here, this is our sounding from right uh, at this location here. So whatever this location is in northern Mexico, that's where this sounding comes from yesterday evening. And you see very, very dry, well-mixed air out here in the low to mid levels across that particular sounding. So we have very, very dry air here on the higher terrain of northern Mexico. And as we have the orientation of the low-level jet, low-level flow here, that's going to allow winds to come down the mountains, down the higher terrain here. And with such dry air, that may allow some dry air to seep in here to this area of south central Texas. And that is going to get invected northward on the low level southerly flow. So we could see some drier downsloping flow here. That's one hypothesis for what this is. Uh, creeping into south central Texas, and that will be advected northward on the low level southerly flow east of the dry line, which may be a big fly in the ointment as well with this particular setup. Uh, so we're going to have to watch that. The fact that multiple models have this, if just one model had this, I'd say it's just a model quirk of that particular model. But because multiple models have this, it does seem to be something that we need to worry about uh, here. We'll see if the European model has it. I'm just curious. Might be a little bit. Yeah, there it is. There it is on the European model. This is 12Z Sunday, 7 a.m. Cratering dew points there right in that little pocket of south central Texas. And that would make sense bringing some downsloping flow off the higher terrain there of, uh, you know, uh, northern Mexico. So that is definitely something we're going to need to watch for sure. Some of these models, not much of an issue with that. I think farther, the farther north you go, that we might be a little bit sheltered from that. Really uh, right ahead of the surface low in, into west central Kansas might not be as much of an issue. But farther south along the dry line, already marginal thermodynamics may be impacted even uh, more greatly by this little plume of drier air especially down from southwest Kansas into western Oklahoma. Again, up here on the dry line, uh, or up on the surface low, actually, we might not see as much of an issue there, uh, but that is definitely something we're going to have to watch going into this setup on Sunday. So with that said, let's take a few soundings here, 21Z on Sunday. Let's take one right ahead of the surface low here uh, in what is you know, typically what looks to be somewhat of a cold core-esque type setup. Cold air aloft coming in from the upper trough, the mid and upper trough, right ahead of the surface low here across uh, western Kansas. So this is the se uh, setup we're working with. Again, this is the NAM, so we know the cool bias that the NAM has with surface temperatures. So we may see temperatures get getting up into the upper 60s to low 70s. Dew point of 50 there, so 64 over 50. Already starting to see a little bit of that temperature dew point spread creep up just a tad. Uh, but nice instability aloft despite limited moisture at the surface given those that very cold air aloft. Our 500 millibar temperature here, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So very, very cold air aloft with this trough, allowing for very steep lapse rates aloft and plenty of instability. 1300 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape. A little bit of capping inversion there, but probably not going to be too much of an issue with, with the forcing coming in from the trough, as well as the surface low and any frontal boundaries with the dry line and the warm front ahead of the surface low. And a nice profile for um, on all hazards threat. Could uh, foster some large hail with the which su such steep lapse rates aloft, as well as uh, some curvature there in the low levels of the hodograph. Again, in, in these cold core-esque type events, we're more uh, banking on the low-level thermodynamics, 0 to 3 kilometer cape, upwards of 100 joules per kilogram, so plenty of low-level instability. 
with this environment, and that should be able to tilt and stretch uh, surface vorticity front near that surface low and any boundaries into the vertical to aid in tornado genesis in these supercells, despite somewhat limited moisture. Now, if these temperature dew point spreads do get up into the 20 plus range, we, we see surface temperatures in the 70s. That might be a little bit problematic for the tornado threat, uh, but right now we're, I, I do think the, uh, we could see a few tornadoes up here on the surface low, uh, even with such limited moisture uh, in this kind of cold core-esque environment. Down here along the dry line, let's take a uh, more so of a sounding in western Oklahoma, where dew points are a little bit less impacted by that little plume of lower dew points there. And this would be a, a lot more of a hail sounding, a, a hail type threat if storms can fire here. And that's a big if, given so, a lot of dry air aloft you see here and a very well mixed surface layer, 71 over 46. Limited instability aloft. I still think this might be underdoing it a bit given such cold air aloft, but uh, that is definitely not a profile favorable for tornadic activity. And that might allow for storms to struggle with so much dry air aloft in the low levels going up all the way through the profile. So not looking as favorable al south along the dry line. Looks like the surface low might be the play, at least on this particular model run. Let's take another sounding here. It does look like we have a few splotches of higher dew points that might indicate convection firing along the surface low. So let's take a sounding just out ahead of that uh, possible convection here at 0 Z, 7 p.m. So this is up on the surface low in western Kansas, and we do see some convection here. So this might not be totally uh, representative of the environment. Let me try to take one a little bit farther away from this, um, from that convection there, just to see if we can get a little bit of a more representative sounding. Um, now, this is a little bit better, and you see very strong low-level shear here as the hodographs really, really enlarge, getting closer to sunset. That is that low-level jet ramping up. 850 millibar flow. We start the day on the NAM uh, with uh, very strong flow already in place, uh, 40 to 50, 60 knots of flow here across this region ahead of the dry line, and that is going to only ramp up as we go into the evening hours. Closer to the surface low, we might be a little bit removed from this, but we still have some of that, those 30s and 40s seeping into this region out ahead of the surface low. So as is not usually the case with cold core events, we might have some stronger shear closer to the surface low uh, with this particular setup, especially out ahead of the surface low, very, very strong low level jet uh, that develops going into the evening hours, really maintains itself through the day. And that's not all that surprising with such a strong low level cyclone developing in this environment. So very favorable setup if supercells can hold on in a, in a discrete mode we don't have temperature dew point spreads all that high, this would be definitely an environment favorable for a few tornadoes. Uh, li somewhat limited instability here going into the getting closer to sunset, but still very, very steep lapse rates aloft. This would favor a tornado threat with these supercells. Down to the south along the dry line, we do see some instability there. Uh, our temperature dew point spreads are coming down a bit. Uh, so that would help any supercells perhaps uh, sustain in the environment farther south along the dry line uh, with a very favorable look uh, on that wind profile for tornadic supercells, strongly veering low level flow uh, with height. Uh, so that certainly would favor tornadoes with any supercells that can remain. Uh, we probably will see a transition to more of a squall line with the strengthening low level jet, strengthening forcing with time. We probably should see a, a transition to more of a linear mode going into Sunday evening. Uh, let's take uh, a let's take a few let's take a look at the um the orientation of the dry line and the wind uh the overall deep layer shear vectors so here's our dry line our initiating boundary for storms we'll draw that in and then we'll draw we'll look at our shear vectors with respect to that initiating boundary very much perpendicular to that initiating boundary all the way down the dry line into north central texas so a very very favorable look we should have plenty of a window uh, for discrete supercells in this environment. And, th and then again, as the forcing ramps up going towards sunset and after, we should see a transition to more of a linear mode with this setup. But initially, discrete supercells would be the favored mode in this environment, uh, posing that all hazards threat uh, from mid to late afternoon going into early evening. So all in all, a good looking setup. Definitely the fly in the ointment is going to be the moisture with this setup. Uh, but again, I think we, sh we will, will be able to compensate, especially up here along the surface low, where we're gonna be farther from that, that weird plume of, of cratering dew points there that originates in South Central Texas. A little bit farther from that, so we may not have as much influence from that across, uh, in the surface low region in Western Kansas. So that could be our favorite area for tornadic activity with any supercells that can sustain up in that environment. Down to the south along the dry line, a little bit more meager moisture at least, in, at least initially, so that could allow for storms to struggle, uh, but we could see more uh, development down here into western Oklahoma going into the evening hours uh, on uh, Sunday. 
So here's the GFS. We'll take a sounding on the GFS, see what it shows, just to kind of compare the two models here. Can't take any soundings on the Euro, so we'll have to go without soundings on that one. But GFS should be able to give us a, a sense of the environment uh, that is showing, and that's pretty favorable uh, all in all. GFS showing some cooler temperatures up here on the surface low as well, so that might not be, the NAM might not actually be too far off out ahead of the surface low in western Kansas, but overall very, very favorable look. Assuming we have enough instability in this little capping inversion there is not too much of an issue, which I don't think it will be with the forcing mechanisms at play. Uh, we should have the uh, plenty of instability for supercells, and that wind profile is very, very favorable for tornadic activity with those super supercells. Strongly veering and strengthening winds with height in the low levels of the atmosphere. Uh, here we are down along the dry line, not as much instability, uh, but uh, plenty of low level and deep layer shear to support a tornado threat with those supercells. So that is going to do it for Sunday. Let's get into the Monday threat now. We'll go back to the 500 millibar map on the 12Z NAM. We'll start at uh, 0Z Monday, so 7 p.m. Sunday evening. Just to set the stage, once again, this is our negatively tilted lead shortwave out, out across Kansas and Oklahoma. Main trough still well back here across the west coast into Baja, California. As we go into Monday, that shortwave, uh, the lead shortwave going to eject off into the Midwest, and our main trough going to start ejecting into the southern U.S. and Mexico. Here we are, uh, 21Z, so 4 p.m. Monday evening. A little bit of a positively tilted trough here, strong flow rounding the base of that trough. We're kind of stuck in between this little short wave up here to the north and our main trough here to the south, but strong southwesterly flow out across east Texas into the mid-south. Uh, we're in the exit region of this trough, so we should have plenty of forcing for ascent across this region to support severe storm development, or at least renewed severe storm development on Monday. Here is the GFS, 500 millibar progression starting Sunday evening. Here's that little lead short wave, main trough back in here. And we get pretty much the same story as what we saw on the NAM. This is going into Monday afternoon, lead shortwave out here across the Midwest, and our trough down here across Mexico into the southern U.S. A little bit more neutrally tilted, perhaps, than the NAM was showing, but overall, basically the same idea. Strong southwesterly flow in the exit region of that trough, providing plenty of forcing for ascent in the uh, Arclitex region down to the east. So we should have plenty of synoptic scale forcing for ascent. Now, as we know, what happens in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere has implications on what happens at the surface. So with our more negatively tilted lead shortwave, we're going to have our main surface low. That surface low that develops in western Colorado, western Kansas, eastern Colorado, Sunday through the day Sunday. That's going to shift off to the northeast with our main shortwave uh, to the north. And by Monday afternoon, 4 p.m., that surface low, according to the NAM, is located somewhere there in central Iowa. Cold front probably draped down to the south, warm front up here across the Midwest. So we could have potentially a, a severe threat up here in the Midwest. We'll have to see here in a second if the moisture makes its way that far north. But we do also see secondary surface low development ahead of the positively tilted trough down here uh, in the our main trough down here across the southern U.S. Because it's a little bit more positively tilted, not quite as robust of a surface low response, surface response here, but we do see some semblance of surface low development here in the southern, uh, into the mid south Monday uh, afternoon and evening. We'll zoom in here on our um, southern plains sector so you can see this a little bit better. It's definitely a weaker surface low here across the Arcliptex, uh, but it does help to a little, maybe back those winds out ahead of it. Here up to the north, you see a little bit more veered surface winds, still definitely favorable for severe weather, but down here, a little bit more backed surface low. That might lead to a little bit stronger low-level shear in this environment ahead of this secondary surface low. As we go towards zero Z, that surface low kind of develops a little bit better across western Arkansas. Nice, nicely backed southeasterly flow out ahead of that across the mid-south into the southeast. Here is the GFS depiction of the surface pattern. So here's our surface low out across western Kansas by Sunday evening. That again will move off to the northeast. And as the NAM showed, it should be somewhere up there in western to central Iowa by uh, mid-afternoon on Monday. We don't see quite as strong of a surface low developing here with the GFS in the southern uh, risk area. Eventually, we do see a little bit of a closed contour develop, but very, very weak, very, very nebulous surface pattern, perhaps right here across southern Arkansas, a little bit better surface low development. We do see nicely backed flow, as we saw on the NAM out ahead of that across the Mississippi River Delta region. Uh, so we should have stronger low level shear out here across the secondary surface low. Uh, we'll see how that progresses as we take some soundings in just a second. How about our moisture? Here's the NAM progression of the surface moisture. With that surface flow moving off to the northeast, we should be able to pull some moisture northward, and the NAM is definitely showing that. Here we are at 4 p.m. Monday. I'll zoom in on our central or our Midwest sector. We do see uh, mid 
low to mid 50s dew points out here ahead of the surface low so that could foster somewhat of a low end severe threat up here we'll take a sounding just for the giggles here out ahead of the surface low uh, I do think what happens on uh, Sunday is going to really modulate what happens on Monday. So we're still a little bit unclear about what exactly is going to happen on Monday. But we definitely could see a severe threat develop right along the surface low and perhaps somewhat of a cold core-esque regime. That looks pretty favorable. Decent low-level instability, more than decent, 160, 0 to 3 kilometer cape. So very uh, nice low-level instability there across parts of Iowa into perhaps Illinois, right ahead of the surface low. Nice uh, wind profile for an all hazards threat. Uh, nice low level shear here. Again, not something you see with these kind of cold core esque type setups. This might not be a true cold core setup. So we could see a tornado threat definitely develop up there across the Midwest if we can get uh, robust moisture up there, which, you know, in this case, robust might be mid 50s dew points, which the NAM is definitely showing. So deep layer shear favorable for supercells as well. That could favor an all hazards threat right along the surface low there into parts of Iowa, perhaps as far as Illinois, maybe southern or northern Missouri. Down to the south, let's take a look at the uh, southern sector here, out across the southern plains. So again, Monday, we're closer to the surface moisture uh, region, so the source region. So we should have much better moisture for Monday, especially in the southern portions of the risk area, our main uh, risk area that the SBC has highlighted. And you see low to mid and even upper 60s dew points out here from southeast Texas eastward into Louisiana and Arkansas. So we should have plenty of moisture here. So out ahead of that little surface low that develops, um, across the Arclotex region could be our favorite area for severe development. Let's take a few soundings out here across the warm sector. Decently broad warm sector could favor uh, perhaps some room for uh, discrete activity ahead of the uh, surface front. That surface front definitely progressive should be our main initiating boundary. So that could be more of a linear mode out across that kind of dry line slash Pacific front out there. We'll see how our um, boundary, our shear vectors look with respect to the boundary. And by this point, much more parallel to the boundary. So that could lead to a much uh, shorter window for discrete supercells on Monday. Uh, but again, we could have stuff fire out ahead of the main uh, surface um, boundary. And in this environment, that would be favorable for all severe hazards. Nice instability, definitely on the weaker side. This could be just a NAM thing, but uh, rich low-level moisture for sure, 73 over 62 there. A little bit of a warm nose there in the mid-levels. That could just be a NAM quirk. We'll kind of dis uh, disregard that for now, but definitely enough instability to support a severe threat, 700 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape with a profile favorable for uh, severe hazards, including tornadoes. We do see some curvature there in the low levels of the hodograph. Zero to one kilometer layer, not all that much curvature curvature there, um, but enough to support a tornado threat. Lots of speed shear as well. Deep layer shear favorable for supercells. So we should see organized convection out here uh, in the southern risk area with the threat in the northern risk area for maybe a few isolated uh, tornadic supercells up there if we can get robust moisture into that Midwest sector. Here we are on the GFS. Let's see how our moisture progresses. Once again, that moisture, we do see enough making its way up there ahead of the surface low. Very limited here on the GFS. This could, uh, the GFS is kind of taking over its normal biases here. I, I would suspect to, I would uh, le lean on a solution a little bit closer to the NAM. It, GFS tends to underdo instability and moisture in these setups, but we do see that surface low up here. Moisture is trying to feed up in, into their low upper 40s to low 50s dew points. Should be enough to support a low end severe threat with that area, then down to the south we do see a little bit less robust warm sector perhaps than what the NAM was showing. Uh, we'll go back to the NAM here and compare. So you see maybe a little bit less robust warm sector. NAM tries to bring that moisture a little bit farther northward. That is a typical GFS bias, but we do have enough warm sector here to support a severe threat from East Texas into Louisiana, Western Mississippi. And I would suspect an all hazards threat uh, would be able to be uh, realized in this kind of environment. Um, so let's see here as we p take a sounding right in the middle of the warm sector, just trying to get a sense of the environment. Yep, that would favor a severe threat. Again, fairly unidirectional flow in the lowest kilometer, not much curvature there in the low levels of the atmosphere as far as the wind profile goes, but we do have enough low level, uh, just from a, 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 a value perspective, 230 uh, meter square per second squared effective storm relative helicity, plenty of low level shear to perhaps support a tornado threat there, uh, but I think maybe we might be leaning toward more of a damaging wind threat with this environment, given a fairly short window for discrete supercells uh, and more of a linear mode along the cold front back here um, that would foster more of a squall line. Uh, so we could have a few embedded tornadoes, perhaps some damaging winds as well. 
Uh, but uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that Midwest sectors. That could be, uh, for, at least for storm chasers, the main play if we can get robust moisture up there and, and develop enough instability. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, once again, uh, slight risks have been outlined for day three and four. So Sunday and Monday, March 24th and 25th. This is our Sunday threat. Slight risk in the yellow shaded area there from the Kansas-Nebraska border through western and central Kansas down into western and central Oklahoma. Again, a little bit skeptical on the western Oklahoma threat, at least initially, given that, that weird pocket of uh, drier air, uh, low-level air making its way to the north. Uh, up here along the surface low could be where our favorite area is, a little bit farther away from that little weird dry pocket and a little bit better forcing mechanisms along the surface low. Uh, and ahead of the dry line up here. So right now, definitely favoring northern portions of the risk area across western and central Kansas. Uh, we'll see how the SPC decides to refine their contours here over the next few outlooks. Uh, but for now, this is what we have, slight risk from Kansas into Oklahoma, marginal risk extending down to the south into southwest Texas. Then we go into Monday. That threat continues. SBC has highlighted the risk area here for East Texas into Louisiana, Southern Arkansas, Western Mississippi. Uh, that should, I think, looks to me to be more of a, a linear organization to those storms. So more of a damaging wind, perhaps embedded tornado threat down here uh, across this, uh, this highlighted area. Also would not be surprised to see a uh, severe contour up here across Iowa, Northern Missouri, perhaps Northwest Illinois ahead of the surface low. If we can get robust enough moisture in there, we could see a low-end severe threat develop with all hazards possible, uh, including a few tornadoes uh, in a, a very uh, low cape, high shear type setup uh, ahead of the surface low there in, in the Midwest. So we'll have to watch that for sure. Would not be surprised to see them add a risk area uh, in future outlooks up there in the Midwest. But for now, all we have highlighted is this southern area uh, from the uh, East Texas into the Mid-South and Southeast. Uh, I'll be back with more updates as needed as the setup approaches. Um, so I'm sure we'll see some changes in the outlook contours over the next couple of days. So uh, keep your eye on the forecast. I'll be back with updates as needed. But for now, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.